Hello. In today's Straight Talk, I'm going to be discussing the subject of tyranny. I find that tyranny is a really in-your-face subject right now because it's going on on such a grand scale in the world. But I'm here really to talk today about the tyrannies we experience day to day within our own living rooms, within our own homes. So before I go into this subject, I would like to just share with you some dictionary definitions that might help to clear up what this subject really, what the word tyranny and a couple of words around that actually mean, according to the uh, one of the English dictionaries online. So I researched the word tyrant, first of all. So what is a tyrant? It's an autocratic ruler with little political credibility, but with self-delusions of grandeur. What is an autocrat or what does autocrat mean? Tyrannical, despotic, domineering. What is a despot? What does despot mean? A king or other ruler with absolute unlimited power or any tyrant or oppressor. Somebody who's not important or deserving of respect. One who dictates. A person who behaves in an authoritarian or tyrannical manner. A few of those knocking about at the moment, hey? A ruler exercising absolute power without hereditary right or the free consent of the people. A ruler whose power is unlimited and is not challenged by a recognised opposition. That's a really important phrase. I'll come to that in a minute. Of minor importance or significance, a tin pot dictator trying to look like a statesman. So... One thing I want to touch on there is I love the phrase tin pot tyrant because it kind of reveals the truth a bit like the Wizard of Oz. Um, these tyrants are, to my mind, tin pot tyrants. It's it's a fake way of obtaining power where other people believe it, other people believe in it and go along with it. And as long as people keep believing it and going along with it, they will keep on being a tin pot tyrant. The other thing I wanted to come back to is recognised opposition, which is a phrase that's mentioned there in uh, those dictionary descriptions. So when you think about the what I call micro tyrannies, these are the um, the cases that come into our lives day by day on a normal standard everyday basis where um, one person has a dictatorial attitude towards another person and it can exist between parents and siblings, um, siblings, uh, sorry, parents and children, siblings. Um, it can exist with a partner, wife, husband, whatever. It can exist with our own children. It can exist between friends and in um, intimate friendships and um, social groups. It can exist in the workplace it can even exist in everyday places like uh, in a shop. You know, you may go in a shop and bump into one of these tin pot tyrants who has a way of behaving. Uh, if you remember going back to um, probably the 80s, um, Ethel Ethel, I can't say that word. Ethel Ranson had a program called That's Life with Doc and they used to talk about a jobs worth. Some people would write in and nominate a jobs worth who they'd talk about that week, what had happened, how that person had been nominated as a, a jobs worth. Um, usually they wouldn't have the name of the person. They would, you know, who, whoever experienced the jobs worth in full flow will write in and say, this is what happened to me. Um, but that's basically a tin pot tyrant, somebody who doesn't have any real substantial power or any feeling of personal power, which is very different to power over, it's power within. Um, those people who don't feel any power within will try and have power over, so they'll search out their significance by being domineering, unpleasant, dictatorial, um, offensive to other people because they feel important and that's how they get that that's what that label tin pot tyrant they're not real they're just people like the wizard of oz who believe their own bullshit basically um so if you uh, for recognized opposition if you imagine you're at work and there's somebody who behaves in the way i've just described who is um putting other people down or causing deliberate 
upset in the workplace. One of the jobs I used to have many years ago was to do market research. One of the places I worked at, there was somebody just like that who loved, she, she was an office manager, she loved to almost pull you in as a new favourite or favourite for that day or that week or whatever and she'd be, you know be really nice and pleasant and you'd think oh she's quite nice and then as soon as your guard was down or as soon as you you, you felt you know that this was a nice person to work with out the attacks would come and she had a reputation in the office for being like this among other people who'd worked there longer than me who kind of rolled their eyes one time when it happened to me and they were like oh you're the you're the new <laughs> you're the new victim um of this person it, it was just a pretty crappy situation she would have this way of making you putting you in a position where she could stab you in the back a uh, very unpleasant lady um but a tin pot tyrant um so if i hadn't now in in your job you probably wouldn't stand up unless you wanted to lose your job you know or your job was important enough to you at the time it was just a bit of part-time extra work for me um I didn't stay there very long because I just got fed up with it to be honest um but you may choose not to speak up for your own reasons and that can go um with regard to personal relationships with regard to an office relationship you know a situation at work um, but if you don't speak up then you are not opposition you are somebody who rolls over and allows that person to go on tyrannizing and yes I guess I did but in that situation there wasn't really much I was going to be able to do about it and frankly I didn't really care that much because it like I say it was just a casual additional income at the time um but if you don't speak up in defense of your own uh, if you don't be your own advocate you don't speak up about your feelings your needs um if something's troublesome to you if you don't agree with something, if you don't speak up, you are not going to give them any opposition. What you're doing is giving them the floor. You're allowing them to continue. You are actually enabling that person to continue to do the same things, to, to behave in the same way, in a tyrannizing way, unless you become opposition. And and in that, think about it as thinking about it as um opposition in terms of fight that's not what I'm talking about here I'm talking about standing up being seen being visible and because we're not taught communication skills very well at school or um, you know we, we learn by default in families and they weren't taught very well either at school uh, presumably each generation gets a little bit better but until we're taught communication skills as a matter of being human and how to be human how to um, look out for yourself in this world, how to protect other people who may be more vulnerable than you and how to have equal relationships that, that contain respect and equality, then we're going to need to be continually visiting the language we use and the way we enable people who um, maybe, let's say, somebody who's trained by the patriarchal culture, um, which would, men and women can both fall into that um patriarchal model of how to be but the patriarchal model for men in particular is doesn't matter about anybody else just do what serves you don't care about anybody else um people with that kind of thinking won't give two thoughts about your being upset if you only ever display maybe you know you might not have a smile you might seem grumpy you might sulk a bit you might withdraw some um but at the end of the day if you don't present some sort of opposition to them they will go on being a tyrant in ever more obvious and uh, oppressive ways if you don't become somebody who advocates for yourself which is like i'm saying here a recognized opposition of some kind so every time we don't speak up with those little tyrannies at home the everyday things like somebody else has always got the remote control i mean i don't watch tv so <laughs> apart from the odd film here and there but if you're in a couple say i have been in that situation where 
particularly men seem to be quite good at this flick 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 and you don't want to watch tv in the first place but the tv is always blaring in the corner and it's like ah <laughs> you feel crazy um but they have the remote and that's how it is somebody always does the cooking somebody also always does all the washing up as well but it's not the person who's getting weighted on hand and foot that's that's um sharing equally in any of those tasks the more we surrender our wishes, our needs, our feelings to somebody who behaves like a tyrant. It might be just that, you know, they might say, um, you know, I'll owe you one or I'll, you know, we'll talk about that tomorrow or whatever. They put you off and they always put you off so that nothing ever actually changes. That is Tim Pot tyranny in my book. And the more we get used to tolerating those kinds of behaviour, the more we roll over, the more we abdicate from the responsibility to stand up for ourselves, the more we enable, we also disable ourselves, disempower ourselves. We, what we do is we develop a habit that's hard to break. Any habit becomes hard to break because it's just, it's so well established, it's so well used that it just, roles um and maybe the day when you stand up and say hang on a minute that's not okay the other person might faint because they're so shocked that you've stood up for yourself and and said something finally um that that might really surprise them but for goodness sake do it stand up at some point get used to the idea that if ever i want change i have to become an opposition to that tyranny uh, in one way or another one of the things about this communication thing is that we, we don't get taught how to disagree, how to um, remain in open dialogue without it becoming or descending into a, a fight or an argument. Um, we, you know, one of the things I've struggled through in my, um, you know, years ago when I was married and sometimes even still today uh, in relationships that matter to me is when I feel... Uh, overwhelmed or I'm feeling too compromised it's gone on for too long or something's too important to not speak about if it's a really difficult conversation is going to be had um, or at least really uncomfortable for me what I would tend to end up doing is not speaking and not speaking and not speaking and then I would get to a point where I was exhausted by the energy keep trying to keep that energy inside um, you know, trying to hold a beach ball underwater you j eventually there's going to be a reaction the reaction could be any number of things for me I would end up getting tearful and sometimes I would feel down first and I wouldn't really know necessarily why I feel down I would just have this overwhelming sense that I'm overwhelmed and I can't put my finger exactly on what it is so I would end up getting emotional and sleep on it and then by the next day I would be freed by um, the tears, I think, the previous evening or whatever, and I would be able to react appropriately or to act appropriately rather than react appropriately and to be able to express myself. Um, I, it's something it takes practice. You have to keep on trying, keep on perfecting it, keep on working on it. But you have to start if you want to stop being tyrannised by Tim Pot Tyrant to may exist in your own living room. Let's say in a sibling relationship, let's say there's a family where one sibling is a narcissist, very domineering, very um, uh, controlling. So they, narcissists have a way of coming across to other people as very charming. People who don't know them well can get really sucked in by the narcissist's behaviour. And they would have it that, if there's a problem, the problem is with you, not with them, even though the rest of the family know what's going on. But people will very often not stand up to that person who's creating so much dissent in the family that it can literally tear the family apart. They'll be saying, you can come to this, but you're not my family, you're not going, and you've got children and your children aren't coming because they're your children. You know, that's doing things within the family that divides the family and if the family do not stand together and say, you know what, this this behaviour is not okay, it's hurting people I love and care about, 
And if this is the way it you feel the need to carry on, count me out. That's what I would do to say, I'm not going to engage with this because it's not family behavior. It's not nice behavior. And you people may look at that and say, well, I don't want to take sides. Well, it's not about taking sides. It's about creating a, a, a family dynamic where everybody is valued, where everybody is seen equally, where we can accept one another, we can be caring towards one another, um, not where the family is constantly being divided. Um, and that can go on for a lifetime um, when we don't stand up. In a relationship, if we don't stand up, if we don't advocate for ourselves, if we don't express our needs, we are hurting ourselves. Um, more and more, science is catching up now and realising that the effects of those kinds of um, dynamics are really dangerous to not only your mental and emotional well-being, um, because when you when you keep on suppressing or repressing your feelings and your truth, what can happen is you can become depressed. You could even become suicidal because you feel invisible, and it, you know, and it, 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 you really must take it seriously. Um, in health, uh, Dr. Gabor Mate talks about this quite a lot. The impacts on our health of not being real, not being truthful, not being honest, not showing up and, and advocating for ourselves has very real consequences in the health department. I know this from my own personal experience. When I was married, I um, would get all these minor but troublesome medical conditions or health conditions that would come from the stress of the relationship I had at the time. And only after that relationship ended, I didn't have any of those issues anymore. Um, so stress is very real. It can, can create a really um, negative outcome for us, negative outcomes. It's not just necessarily one thing when we don't advocate for ourselves and we don't search for um, the way that works for us to express ourselves, our feelings, our needs and so forth. So we we can become our own tyrant against ourselves if, let's say, we, we roll over for the sake of a quiet life, we don't want to rock the boat, we don't want to create a scene. You shouldn't have to create a scene to be seen in your truth. You shouldn't have to fight for your rights. But unfortunately, the way the world is, that's the way it tends to be. Because the dominant people who don't care about other people's needs will happily take up whatever you... whatever snippet you give them of agreement, of enabling, of rolling over, they will snatch it up very quickly and take control. And then they do it so fast and so efficiently that you can be left floundering thinking, what just happened? But, you know, I don't feel good about it. Something's wrong. I didn't express myself. And then you can become depressed because you, I'm not expressed. <laughs> I'm I'm pushed down. I'm I'm not able to say what I need and what I feel, um, and that can have real, like I say, real health um, backlash. Really significant, important uh, health um, conditions can come from continual suppression, continual being nice, continual trying to please everybody else. Um, so, just thinking about the. Um, the micro tyrannies and how every time we suppress or repress our natural needs to be equally present in a relationship, those are the training ground for habits. So if we've grown used, probably from childhood, if we've grown used to rolling over, to not saying anything, to not rocking the boat, those our little trainings, little uh, grooves in the grey matter that are that become ha habitual behaviours and it becomes very hard to see when we're doing it. Very often the awareness that something's wrong just begins like that. It's an awareness something's wrong, but can I tell you, can I tell you what's wrong? Can I tell you what's troubling me? It might take you months, years even to realise that's what's wrong. I never expressed myself. I never said what I needed and so many times I really needed to speak up, but I didn't. Um, and those those um, micro uh, infarctions where we gave the other person 
absolute control that they were able to manipulate us because we we didn't want to rock the boat they undo the relationship any trust we start we, we started out with um can be eroded either very quickly or over time our relationship with ourselves is eroded because we realize we can't stand up for ourselves we realize what kind of advocate am i for myself how do you trust somebody who never advocates for you how do you trust somebody that is you that never advocates for you? How can it not harm your relationship with yourself? How can it not damage your self-esteem? And then when it's with somebody else, if we're continually giving over our permission, uh, which is usually tacit permission because you don't stand up and speak about what you want or what you don't want, what you like, what you don't like, all of that sort of stuff, you give those permissions to them at great cost to the relationship too, because over time, those little resentments are like sweeping stuff under the carpet. They become um, bigger and bigger issues because they're mounting up, because the resentment is growing, because I'm fed up now of not having a space to speak or being accused of being dramatic or whatever it might be you meet with because you want to speak up about your truth. And if you are also are not taught in the... Um, communication department and most of us weren't how to have a difficult conversation you might resort uh, resort to uh, pattern behaviors where mine used to be I would withdraw and I would get tearful or I might go for a drive and I would maybe if I was really upset I might have a Maui in the car up on the hills or something like that shout it out and where nobody could see you and cry and, and bawl and what have you and then come back a bit more oh, feel better now um or it might be that you end up in a big fight that's just escalates and escalates and escalates because it's not balanced it's not a balanced conversation by then you can say something like there's something i need to say you can put lay it out you know put something out there in in front of the conversation you're going to have i need to talk about something now, if the other, if you speak and you say, I'm not happy about X, Y, or Z, and the other person starts to shout at you in response, you can use words like, this is important to me. My relationship with you matters enough to me that I want to have this conversation. I don't want a shouting match. If you feel too angry or upset or too reactive to have a conversation with me, then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go shopping or I'm going to go for a walk or whatever and let's come back to it later. But I do want to have this conversation. So you basically stop cooperating with somebody who is shouting you down. And very often that's actually a tactic um, where somebody makes such a big drama out of your wanting to express yourself or to disagree or whatever it is that you back off completely and never visit it again. Or if you try and raise the subject again, you'll get something like an eye roll or not again. Not We're not going to go there again. It's just a control tactic that it's a learned behaviour from them as much as it is from you to back off. They will, you stick your head out of the hole and they poke a stick in your eye and you run away. And every time you might think to do it, to raise it again, out comes the stick in the eye again. So they, they are just... Um, that's a way of transacting between the two of you where if you're not fully prepared to engage in being your own advocate, the tyranny will go on. And if it's in a family, it's, I mean, what family doesn't have big issues? I think the majority of families have big issues. Um, but if you don't stand against tyranny at home, in your own living room or in your family, that tyranny will continue to go on and on and on and it can destroy families it really can so there's going to be loads of things i want to talk about on this subject and i will come back and, and we'll talk about it some more um but i wanted to just lay this out as a where does tyranny begin where does the pattern begin um because when you think of the external world the things that are going on at the minute where there are massive tyrannies going on in the world where our rights are being stripped away from us um, or at least we're allowing it 
to, we're surrendering really our rights by going along with it, by allowing it to continue. Sometimes you have to rock the boat. Sometimes you, most of us don't want to do that. Most of us just want a, a peaceful life to be able to get along, but it doesn't work like that. You know, if, if you're, you either um, find the strength to change the way that things are going by being more present, being more willing to show up, uh, being more willing to stand up for yourself and to advocate for yourself, then those tyrannies are just going to continue. So if we if we want to change what's going out, go, go, pardon me, what's going on in the world, in regard to the macro tyrannies that are happening right now, we have to begin with the practice ground, which is our home life. We have to be willing to show up, and we can do it peacefully. We can do it gracefully and elegantly, and we can practice at home, day by day, week by week growing our own I'm, I'm i'm thinking grow a backbone but i don't it, it sounds a bit mean um but it's kind of true actually um we can learn we can practice at home to stand up for ourselves to have a relationship where we exist in at least half of the we take up 50 percent of the room in the relationship otherwise we're surrendering it might be 60 40 to the other person and that's no good we have to find a way to um, to make things work better. So that's my invitation to you today. If you've listened to this and you've you've um, got anything useful out of it, the the invitation is begin to practice. Find the small things that that you can handle. Um, you know, even if something's been going on for years, you can begin to change the dynamic by speaking up. You you might just uh, set the mood. You know, on a I know a, a weekend night or something. Um, you know the the maybe the, you've got kids. The kids are staying over at the grandparents or something. You've got some space to be able to say, "I need to talk." There's something I need to say to you. You know, keeping it calm and mellow. And any point it starts to get out of control or somebody's trying to shout you down, you can you can express that. You know that you you are determined. You you need to have this conversation. It's important enough to you because the relationship matters to you. And if you don't get present in the relationship it will suffer and it could very easily become so bad that the relationship will have to end because you can't go on living with resentment where you're not able to to occupy your space in a relationship equally and um, with you know as uh, much regard for your needs and your wishes as there is in that relationship for both of you for, for the other party so yeah have a you know have a little practice with some of the smaller issues and as, as you build your confidence and you start to get stronger so you can begin to express yourself more honestly and openly um with that calm people will begin to respect you more because they trust what you're saying you're being honest you're showing up it's really a very profound thing that you're doing not just for you but for the relationship too when you're willing and able to show up in the ways that you can um, so finally, if you've enjoyed listening and found this useful, um, please be, you know, consider subscribing and, um, you know, be able to see future videos coming up. We're going to be discussing all kinds of things um, about relationships, about being human, the kind of things that tend to get swept off the table. I'm not I'm not off the table. I'm at the table and I'm going to be discussing those things over the coming weeks and months and years. So um, if you feel like you'd like to comment, please do. Please keep it respectful so we can engage in dialogue that could be helpful to us all. Um, and uh, please like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. And I look forward to talking with you again. So bye for now.